The following is an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. If we have moved to the cushy chairs on the set, you know it's time to put a capper on the Pro Football Day Week 3. Hi, I'm Vince Cellini, and welcome to the Steel Post Game Report. You just watched the Dallas Cowboys beat the Minnesota Vikings 23-17 in overtime on Emmett Smith's touchdown, 150 yards rushing. And call me crazy, Mark May, but I think Emmett may have a little bit of business to take care of with Jerry Jones. Concerning reopening the contract, I don't know. I think tomorrow morning, the first thing in the morning, what Emma's going to do is he's going to go to Jerry Jones' office and say, <laughs> Dan got $35 million. I'm due for 36 <laughs> I'll tell you what, he deserves whatever he gets. Some teams maybe didn't deserve a win that won games today. It was a wild week three in the NFL. Some teams were pretty fortunate to come away with victories. Absolutely right. Today was a day where it's better to be lucky than good in the NFL. Some teams botched opportunities, missed field goals, had crazy turnovers today, but were fortunate to pull it out in the fourth quarter. I'll tell you what, the San Francisco 49ers left no doubt in their game that took place at home against the Pats. Yes, the Patriots at San Francisco. They were supposed to, uh, supposed to play there on October 22nd of 1989. The game was shifted to Palo Alto because of an earthquake at that time. Well, today they got together at Three Com Park, and that's Drew Bledsoe. And Drew Bledsoe faces another pretty tough team. He's nailed by Kenny Norton there in the first quarter. Had to leave the game because of an injury to his left shoulder. That was his mind. He's a little concerned, but don't be. Scott Zolak, at quarterback, to Curtis Martin on a fourth and one. And he's stuck by Merton Hanks. So Parcells needs help. He needs his kid back in there. And Drew Bledsoe did return to the ball game. Second quarter, and the Patriots are driving. Third down on the 49er, 25. Bledsoe's pass is knocked down by Alfred Williams. They put pressure on Bledsoe all day. The Pats had to settle for a field goal. 3-0. Under a minute to go in the first half. Out of the no huddle. Look at Young to Jerry Rice. 21 yards and a score. 7-3, 49ers. On to the third quarter. And Young and Rice picking up where they left off in the first half. They connect on this 16-yard touchdown. And this is George Seifert. He's jumping for joy. It's 14-3, 49ers. And Bledsoe. He's having trouble with the Niner defense. Merton Hanks comes up with one of two interceptions for him. They were trying to go to Brisbane there. And Bledsoe, just another rough afternoon. Points wise, personally as well. Steve Young, he's doing it through the air from one yard out to sneak for the touchdown. 21 to 3, 49ers. And then Young flipping to Derek Lavelle for the three yard touchdown. 284 yards passing for him. Steve Young is all pumped up about it. And I'll tell you what, out there at Three Count Park, Dion Wu has become a rallying point. 28 to 3, San Francisco. The final numbers. Young had three touchdown passes. He ran for the other score. The Pats still have only one touchdown this season, failing to score on six drives inside the San Francisco 25. Here's your fantasy numbers. Jerry Rice. <laughs> He's Mr. Fantasy League. Six receptions, 87 yards, two touchdowns. Lavelle, 58 on the ground, 42 through the aid. And here's Curtis Martin, 63 yards. All right, we want to go back uh, up now to the Metrodome in Minneapolis where Ernie Johnson is standing by with a guy who ended the ball game for the Dallas Cowboys and won it. Ernie? Thank you very much, Vince. Here with Emmett Smith and Nate Newton, two of the members of the victorious Dallas Cowboys. In overtime tonight, 23-17. Right off the bat, guys, we want to look at the game-winning play and have you guys describe it for us as we look at it from the end zone angle. Emmett, it's it's all you as you tell us about the game winner. Zach, Zach, Zach Del Rio was I actually bounced outside, inside the block, cut up inside. It was nothing but room. He basically had everybody up on the line, and from that point on, it was just a foot race. Nate Newton, 
your uh, your take on this I know early on you were involved and then it was everybody who was watching 22 from behind uh, yeah definitely what, what I saw was we was gonna call a bump play to go down on the, on the center man but they stepped up to the line and I just grabbed the first man I saw and held on and it jumped outside you know there weren't a whole lot of folks who thought this thing was gonna go to overtime they thought if Dallas will come in here they'll take care of business a little tougher, but maybe maybe you guys weren't exactly clicking. Did you feel like it, things were a little out of sync tonight? Yeah, I think we, we definitely didn't play as well as we would like to play. But uh, you know, you gotta give those guys credit. They put their pants on the same way we they, we do, and uh, they're professional athletes just like we are. So uh, you know, you can't take nothing away from. Them. They played a great ball game, and uh, we just didn't execute like we wanted to. But we went out there and did enough to get the job done. Nate, you must know that when you come out here, any any place you visit as the Dallas Cowboys, that you're marked guys, and this gets everybody pumped up from the fans to everybody on the other side how do you deal with that well you know when they first time they don't lose in, in the metrodome we we're like okay here we go again they pumped up but we had to stay settled we had to believe that we can get it in the end and when it went overtime we felt we had it with Emmett back down well you know Emmett I think you finally let yourself smile you were pretty game face out there even well, after you scored and I know there were times when you came to the sidelines and I thought you told Barry Switzer I've been open on plays all night I have and that's what you told <laughs> and what did Barry say to you he said yeah just, just, just be patient. He'll find you. And uh, you know, it was, it was sort of disappointing for that. Not only for me, but everybody. I think we didn't, like I said, we didn't play as well as we li we like to. But uh, uh, we went out and executed it well enough to win the game. And that's all that counts. Disappointing or frustrating? Is it was it a frustrating game for it you was, tonight? It was a frustrating game because w once you see an offense, once you know that you can click on all cylinders, and uh, you come into a game and you, and things are just falling apart in, in, in small portions, and you can't really put a finger on what's going on or what's wrong, and uh, you know you're struggling and, and you. You're really not giving your best performance. You're trying hard physically, but things just not falling your way, and that's just the way it was for us tonight. Nate, will you tell me what it's like? What kind of feeling you leave a ballpark with after a win after you've blocked for this guy? You see the fruits of your labor pretty much on a 31-yard game winner like that. Well, you feel good, but like Emma said, you know things are frustrating. We would drop a pass, we would miss a block, we have mess of assignment. I so, the ball. so <laughs> you know. It, yeah. it, it gets kind of frustrating, but when we win, we've been taught when we win, we go in and watch films on Monday, and correct our mistakes, and try to win better next time. Yes. And, you know, you mentioned the fumble. Does that stick with you, yes, or, or as a professional, can you say, okay, hit me the next one, coach? Well, it, it sticks with me. I mean, uh, my job is to carry the ball, not lay it down on the ground. And, uh, you know, when you fumble the ball, and if you're fumbling a lot, you won't be in the NFL not for, for a long period of time. And, uh, you know, my goal is, is to keep the ball in my hands and give my offense an opportunity to win the game. And, uh, you know, I kind of let them down on that particular play. But, you know, we was able to bounce back and, like I said, put the ball in the end zone and score enough points where we could win the game. Nate, did this game tell you anything about the Cowboys that you didn't already know? No, it just tells us that we got to come even more prepared. During, you get more prepared during the week because everybody's going to be pumped for us. We, we didn't win the Super Bowl. We're about to still pump. Hey, you got some buddy ball next week, huh? Well, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Restrain your enthusiasm. Don't get any easier, <laughs> right. as you can tell. Emmett Smith, thank you very much. Nice ball game. Thanks for joining us. Nate, thank you. thanks a lot. Yeah, they got some Cowboy fans up here at the Metrodome. The Vikings fall to the Cowboys in OT 23-17. Let us go back to Atlanta, Vince. Thanks, EJ. Cowboy fans everywhere. You know, Mark May used to have arms as big as Nate Newton's at I one wish. time. I, don't I wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the 49ers and Patriots game. And New England has to really be concerned. Now, one touchdown in three games. They've made 15 trips in the red zone and come away with one touchdown in three games, Mark. Well, how do you break out of that, first of all? Well, this is a situation that Coach Bill Parcells has to be aware of. First, the offensive team may lose their confidence. I've been in this situation before the Washington Redskins. You're moving the ball inside the hashes from 20 to 20, but you're not scoring points. So the offense has to get their confidence back. You've got a young quarterback in Drew Bledsoe. He's thrown 149 times, but he's the only starting quarterback in the NFL without a touchdown in the air. So he's got to get their confidence back. He's got to build it up this week. He can't tear down their confidence. He's got to get in there and tell these guys, hey, you can do it. We're going to run reverses. We're going to run screens. We're going to put this ball in the end zone, but you guys keep your head up. It's very easy for a team to lose their confidence in that situation. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the guys who made it happen and made those guys struggle from the Patriots, the San Francisco 49er defense. They're an underrated bunch at times because they have so many spectacular players on that 49er offense. But our Craig Sager was in uh, Three Count Park and took a look at that Niner defense and what they did today. The defending Super Bowl champions have been on the defensive lately, and that has brought out the best in them. With a quick, aggressive attack, the 49ers forced four New England turnovers and displayed the mental and physical toughness that has made them number one against the rush. Defensively, we like games like this. We like to uh, get our chance to show that uh, we can play ball. 
so often you talk about Jerry Rice and what the offense can do. Games like this, we uh, were tested. I think Bill Parcells came out and he really tested us, and the uh, offense wasn't clicking early, and uh, defense, we got our chance to really show ourselves, and uh, we're very, very proud about what we did today. What sets the 49ers' defense apart, besides the obvious, which is talent, is desire and consistency. Under new defensive coordinator Pete Carroll, there's a single-mindedness of purpose, which today was to keep Drew Bledsoe out of the end zone. I think we went into this game trying to confuse him because he's still a relatively young quarterback, even though he's a great quarterback, and uh, uh, we were able to get him off his first read, and that was really key uh, in this game. And uh, the entire defense, the defensive line had great pressure, and we were able to cover some people every now and then. And, uh, uh, came up big when we had to. That, that's a hallmark of a defense that's getting better every game. Bledsoe was intercepted three times, sacked four, and he fumbled once. The most devastating hit by second-year linebacker Lee Woodall. Well, the biggest play of the game for myself personally was sacking Bledsoe. I mean, I had even thought about it last night. I wanted to get in and do a blitz and, you know, get to Bledsoe and, you know, be on a highlight film and do something different. But that's the main thing for me that was a big play for me today. For the 49ers, the building is never complete. The quest never ends. And to the dismay of their rivals, it appears that the defense is even better than a year ago. All right, thank you very much, Craig Sager. Two other teams had a chance to get to where the Niners and the Cowboys were at 3-0 now. One of them, the St. Louis Rams. The other, the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, one team held up uh, its end of the bargain anyway. We have the Rams at the Panthers and the first ever game Fort Carolina at home. They're playing at Clemson Memorial Stadium. And what a big day as the commissioner Paul Tagliabue was there to throw out the, the coin toss. And scoreless in the second quarter, Chris Miller, the confident Chris Miller, to Isaac Bruce. 38 yard gain. Bruce is putting together a year. He had five catches for 100 yards in this one. And that set up this two yard touchdown run by Jerome Bettis, the battering ram near the goal line. 67 yards on the ground for him. Coach Rich Brooks' team is up 7 0. Later in the second, Jack Trudeau is in for the ineffective Frank Reich. In the first play, he is sacked by Carlos Jenkins. The ball recovered by Kevin Carter. The Rams forced two fumbles and five INTs. Three plays later, Miller to Jesse Hester, who turns Rod Smith inside out for the 23-yard touchdown catch. Chris Miller is loving it. 14-0 Rams. And the Ram defense in control. In the third quarter, Willie Green fumbles. Anthony Parker recovers. He's going the other way. 27 yards for the touchdown. 21-3. Rams completely in control. Later, Kerry Collins was a quarterback. They played everyone on the roster at quarterback. This is his first pass, and it's picked by Doran Doran, who turns it for the touchdown. 31-3 at that point. Collins was sick about it. 31-10. The final numbers, the Rams host Chicago. They'll try to go to 4-0 next week. We'll give you the fantasy numbers in this game. For St. Louis, we showed you 67 yards on the ground for Bettis. Hester, 54 yards on three catches and a touchdown. McLaughlin missed three field goals. Could have been worse. Collins, you saw his numbers when he got in there as well. Cincinnati Bengals, Seattle Seahawks at the Kingdom. Quarterback Jeff Blake has led the Bengals to their first 2-0 start in three years. After a Seahawks touchdown, Blake to Darnay Scott. Look at this. He just finds some room and explodes through Seahawks. 88 yards with a touchdown. And that tied the game up at seven apiece as Scott blazes to the touchdown. Second quarter, Rick Meyer really came alive in this game. They've been struggling through two games. Winds and throws to a wide open Rob Thomas, who got behind every Bengal. 14 to 7, Seattle out in front. 21 to 30, 279. And a couple of scores for Meyer. In the second half, the Seahawks are up by three. Chris Warren with the football, and Warren breaks out. That put him over 100 yards for the game. Did that touchdown. Now, two minutes left. The Bengals had a chance to tie in a 49-yard try by Doug Pelfrey. He made six field goals against Seattle last year, but he has two misses today. Two costly misses, so Dennis Erickson and the Seahawks, first win of the season, 24-21, the final numbers. Here's the fantasy stuff. Warren on the ground, 109 yards and a touchdown. Blades, 7 for 74 yards. Pickens, 8 catches, 88 yards. He's now caught a touchdown in 8 straight games. All right, Mark May, 
What about these Rams, though? I'll tell you, Rich Brooks, they're not spectacular, but they do force a lot of turnovers, and they don't give up the football. The Rams are doing it the old-fashioned way, by hard work. I talked to Jack Rowley, their offensive quarterback coach, yesterday, and he informed me that the Rams are using the Washington Redskins' Joe Gibbs philosophy of the 1980s. You get a big fullback, you use the one-back offense, and you just beat up the defense so they can't rush the quarterback. Chris Miller's the quarterback. He's running inside and outside, running dash plays to surround the pocket to get outside of it so there's no pressure on the quarterback. On defense, they're putting all kinds of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. They have a lot of sacks. They had seven defensive turnovers today, 24 out of their 31 points led to those scores and they lead the league with 12 turnovers a plus 12 that's amazing i have i can't remember when a team led the league with a plus 12 turnover. i'll tell you when you don't beat yourself you always have a chance to win just mistake free football it'll keep you in ball games all right we do have to take a break on the steel post game report coming up an in-depth look at perhaps the best division in football the afc west speaking of which oakland at kansas city hostetler marcus allen this was wild and an overtime finish The Steel Pro Football Tonight Post Game Report is brought to you by Steel Outdoor Power Tools and by Auto Value Parts Stores, where you'll find the part you want at the value you expect. There aren't many things that can stop a 4x4. There are even fewer things that can stop a steel. No wonder it's the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. Available in steel territory. Son, head over to the Auto Value Parts Store and get the starter and the plugs. They've got what you want at Auto Value right now. Plus, brake pads, a color TV, and a trip for two to Pro Football's biggest game. It's the Big Game Sweepstakes at your nearby Auto Value Parts Store. Pick up your free registration form at Auto Value and register for Auto Value's Big Game Sweepstakes with hundreds of prizes, including a trip for two to the Big Game. Hurry up, we're talking the biggest game of all. Be a Big Game Sweepstakes winner at Auto Value. When I punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots to do the job, got my Wolverines. I can tame a wild jackhammer. In my Wolverine boots. Wolverine door shots, guaranteed comfort for your money back. Work like hell, feel like heaven. Wolverine door shots, made in the USA. You got the winning color. I run my engine anywhere from eight to ten hours a day, and that's constant. Been using Penzol a little over 20 years, and Penzol has always stood by me. It's never, it's never failed me. Now with a revolutionary Penstar molecule, Pennzoil clings to moving parts. Works like liquid ball bearings. Penzoil says it works like a liquid ball bearings. It must because it just keeps on rolling. Engine problems? Before you try a tune-up, try gum out first. The solution could be less than five dollars. Here's a little terminology for you. We're going to do a bump in, and we're vamping right now on the steel post-game report. Larry Cam, he's flying that boom cam like it's the Memphis Bell. Here's the AFC West. We think it's rather interesting, don't you? Kansas City out to a 3-0 start. Look at the 2-1s there. Only Seattle at 1-2. But you know what? Maybe they're not too bad. And speaking of the AFC West, one of the classic AFC rivalries got even better with the Oakland Raiders traveling to Kansas City. It harkens back to the days of the AFL. This one had a bizarre finish to it as it went to overtime at Arrowhead. Want a subplot? How about Art Shell? 27 years a Raider in some capacity. Offensive line. Been good in the NFL, and Kansas City's both lucky and good. As you can see in the picture right here, Tim Brown gets picked by the referee. Made 23 to 17, and just win, baby, win. Sometimes you got to take it on the chin, big guy. All right, we're sorry, Al. 23 17. As he mentioned, 11 of the last 12 now the Chiefs have taken against the Raiders. Marty Schottenheimer is 7 0 all time at home against the Raiders. Marcus Allen he goes over 15,000 yards in his career, the fifth player ever to do that. Dawson with a touchdown, Davis with a touchdown. For Oakland, 20 rushes, 74 yards for Williams, and a couple of scores. Yes, this game, emotions running deep for Art Shell, and our Kevin Kiley was there as Shell shared with him some of his emotions after the game.
you get a sense for the rivalry from this side? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, as soon as the game against the Giants was over last week, uh, um, you can see the mood change, like Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. Uh, the change in the attitude was just totally different. I mean, I, it was awesome. And so now I, I got a feeling as to how this team prepared for the Raiders in the past years. They love playing the Raiders. They really do. They love playing the Raiders because, you know, they just believe that the, the Raiders are supposed to be the best and they're supposed to have the best talent, and uh, they like to meet that challenge. Was there pain for you emotionally in this? No. No. No pain. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a chief now. My loyalty is with the Chiefs, and uh, I want to help this, this football team win a, a Super Bowl championship. And uh, we, we're on the right foot. Uh, the main thing is the attitude in this football team is outstanding. These guys believe they can win, even though the experts have been picking them to come in last in their own division. Uh, they can't believe it, but it doesn't matter what people say about us. The feeling is uh, we know how we feel about ourselves, and we're going to find a way to win football games. Special? Is this special? Was it a special feeling at the end? It's a special feeling. It's special. It's special because we're 3-0. Can you describe your feelings when you saw Hasty? I'm with the Chiefs now, and, um, and the Raiders, uh, as I said, uh, I had a lot of good years there. I had a lot of good years as a player, and I had a couple of good years as a, as a, as a coach there. Um, and But I've moved on with my life, and... Um, can you time, put it behind you? Can I put it behind me? Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a positive thinker. I believe in moving forward. I will move forward. You don't forget the past. I mean, the past is there. It's part of history. But I will move forward with my life with the Chiefs, and um, I will um, relish the time that I have with them. Is there anything left to speak out? about with the Raiders? Is there anything else you'll ever say about it? No, there's, as far as I'm concerned right now, there's nothing to say. All right, thank you, Professor Kiley. We want to go back up to the Metrodome now, and Ernie Johnson standing by with a guy who had a pretty heroic performance to send the Dallas Vikings game into overtime. And now the football analyst is going to give us a first-hand view of what happened. EJ? Thank you, Vince. 22 out of 38, 185 yards, two touchdowns for Warren Moon through the air tonight, but Boy, the feeling right now has got to be tough to deal with. Now, this is when it's tough to do this job, when you have to come out after a game like this. I, I thought our team really played hard. They, they gave everything they had. They played physical football. Uh, we got some big plays, but it just wasn't enough. And they're a great football team. you got to give them a lot of credit. There was talk, and in fact, you said it yesterday. you got to play a perfect game if you're going to beat these guys. But still, even without a perfect game, you had a chance to win this thing. Well, yeah, they didn't play a perfect game either, and some of that was because of us. So uh, you know when two teams get together like this that are very good physical football teams, which we both are, that some good things and some bad things are going to happen. And uh, when you get into a sudden debt like that, you never know what's going to happen because one big play could make the ball game, and they made some big plays, and that was really the difference. I want to take you back to late in the fourth quarter, and you guys are driving and trying to get the equalizer here, and you're at the sidelines. And you and Chris Carter are over there. Let's take a look at this tape. And you're talking to Brian Billick. And you'll watch. You can all, you can all watch him. Billick say. A fade? This is what was. I mean, I'm reading lips. Is this true? Is this Carter's idea? Let's throw a fade on this thing and, and get the equalizer? Yeah, he wanted to throw a fade. But I, I wanted to throw the fade stop, which is a ball where I throw it at Chris's back shoulder because of the way they play bump and run, they play over the top. And I threw the ball at his back shoulder, and Chris makes the. I mean, the that's a heck of an adjustment to make. <laughs> I mean, you got to know the, the fade stop is coming over the wrong shoulder. Right. He gave me the signal that he was going to run it, and, and we went ahead and did it, and he made a great catch. I had tried it earlier in the ball game, and it just went off his hand, so I know I had to throw it a little bit more at him down there on the goal line. What's the mood like in this locker room right now? We're very disappointed. There's no question about it, Ernie, but we realized that we played hard and, and we, we left it all out on the field. Now, when you know you do that, there's a little bit of satisfaction there, but we still lost the football game. What we can't do is, is, is get too caught up in this one loss. We have a very tough physical game next week against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, so we're going to be disappointed for a day, but we've got to somehow regroup and get back and ready to play again next week. What was your take on what the Cowboys were going through tonight? It looked like they were out of kilter, out of sync a little bit. They were, but, you know, some of that has to do with what we were doing. Tony Dungy came up with a, a great scheme against their offense. We knew with, because of our size, we couldn't match up man for man with their defensive line. So we had to shoot some gaps and, and do some different things, blitz every now and then to try and stop their running game. Sometimes you're going to stuff them. Sometimes they'll make a big play like they did a couple of times with Emmett Smith. But you can't sit back and just catch this football team. They're too big. They'll, they'll knock you all around. Have you seen enough of Charles Haley? To <laughs> <laughs> I've seen enough of Charles Haley my whole career. I mean, he's just one of the, one of the best defense defensive ends in the league today. He's playing very well. Not only does he play the pass, but he plays the run. Just a very smart and intelligent player. You know, we talked about uh, the relationship between you and